Farm for Profit Podcast. Take a listen, have a blast. Farm for Profit Podcast. Learn about farming while having a laugh. Farm for Profit Podcast. I like the invitation. We're inviting those that are still hanging around the Commodity Classic. This is the last interview on the last afternoon of the trade show portion of Commodity Classic. I'd say we're a little tired, but I think Kelsey's going to bring us the extra energy we need. Speak for yourself. I'm I'm ready to go. You're ready to go. Well, you sat the last one out. Let's get that on. I did. You're fresh off the bench. I sat the last one out to get social media done, and I got one post. <laughs> you were one. talking <laughs> with... Uh-huh. 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 I didn't mean to. So as we get ready to launch into this episode today... We're going to get an introduction. Today on the Farm for Fun show from the 2024 Commodity Classic at the Suka booth, we saved the best guest for last. <laughs> no she passion. had to travel, and we had to travel way south just to get together when it would have been way closer to get together in the middle. But that's because she's from Canada. This woman is very inspirational. She's a brain cancer survivor. She's pregnant. An agronomist, a farmer, a queen of pumpkins, and much more. Please welcome from Morrisburg, Ontario, Canada, Kelsey Banks. Woo! Oh, thanks, guys. <laughs> I, I, I should have entered. She's a Canadian agronomist. Why, why is the volume level right? because yeah, loud yeah, to nothing? Yeah, like I'm, I always I thought it was kind of funny. I was looking at the title beside uh, my name on the schedule, and it said Canadian agronomist. So I must be like a, is that a just special like a Canadian. Is that special <laughs> over a regular agronomist, or does that knock you down a peg? Oh, <laughs> shots thrown! <laughs> yeah, well, that's, I'm not saying it. What? They said it. Here's here's the fun part: is so when we put that together, we put a couple of things in there just to make people wonder and ask questions. Because I think for the interview that these guys did over the lunch hour today, it was uh, Randy Nesman. Millennial farmer's friend. It wasn't. Uh, no. So I, this is how I presented it because you didn't see this, or maybe you did look at it. But Randy's Batman. Yes. And Millennial Farmer is Robin. Robin. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't need his Robin. So we, we try to throw little things in there that makes people wonder what we're actually doing, and uh, maybe sometimes we don't know what we're doing. Yeah. Well, I mean, hey, we all got to learn, right? Right. <laughs> so this is a fun show. We're, we always go off the rails on these yeah. things, but anyway, so on our fun shows, we have a guest. And we like to learn about you and what you do. So, who are you? Where'd you start? Okay. Well, do you want the whole resume? Or uh? yeah, we yeah. got we got time. <laughs> we got time. Let's start with little Kelsey. Yeah. Dead. With little Kelsey. Okay. Um, so I grew up. Uh, well, actually, first let's talk about geography because uh, yeah, we're very. I, I think <laughs> we we're good at out. U.S. geography, not Canada. Okay. Okay. See, everybody in Canada knows everything about the U.S. because yeah. they had to learn it in school. But everybody from the U.S. knows nothing about Canada yeah. other than they're our hat. <laughs> That's it. Like yeah. it's just up there. Like I used to say, Providence. Yeah. It's not Providence. It's province. Oh. Uh, yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I've had a couple of people ask me what state I'm from, and I'm like, well, I don't live in a state. And they're like, well, where do you live? <laughs> <laughs> so yes. Province. That yes. is exactly where we live. So I live in the province of Ontario. So basically um, where we're located is quite literally I look out my front window and I see the St. Lawrence River and New York State. So to kind of give you that perspective a little bit, that's that's pretty much bang on in a little small town called Morrisburg. Um, and there, uh, yeah, that's Eastern Ontario. And mm-hmm. uh, that that part of Ontario. So I actually grew up in Eastern Ontario in a small area called Hexton, which is kind of near Kempville for your Canadian Eastern Ontario listeners. Woohoo, Eastern (laughs) Ontario. Um, And uh, and I grew up on a farm that we grew pumpkins and potatoes and asparagus. Um, And uh, it was, I mean, uh, I will say that sometimes it was, uh, you know, when you're eight years old and you don't really want to be picking asparagus every other night, but you got to do it. (laughs) That's what someone said that earlier. Like when you're just a farm kid, you just do what you got to do. You don't, even if you don't want to do it, you got to do it. Yeah. 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 I, uh, yeah, I still remember my father telling me, uh, well, your pay is, is your supper. So, uh, just as a a joke to me, but, uh, yeah, he's, um, so yeah, I grew up on that farm there, and um, 
Over time, uh, my dad is actually um, from a farm in Western Ontario, so about an hour north of Toronto, and it's called it's in a town called Orangeville, so or just outside of Orangeville, I should say. So about uh, I guess I was just after college, and um, I had moved up to that farm. There was opportunity for me to farm up there, and you know didn't didn't have anything tying me back to Eastern Ontario really, and wanted to go farm up there. So. I moved up there. It's about five hours away from where I was used to living, so had to adjust to everything new to me. Um, you know, it wasn't just adjusting to the farm with the soil, like the new soil, new to me. Sorry, soil. Sorry. Um, sorry. Sorry. <laughs> I, was, I was waiting for the Canadian accent to come out because she said about, and it wasn't a boot. Oh. I was like, I was like, wait, do you not have a Canadian accent? Uh, and then there it came. Sorry. <laughs> sorry. Sorry. All right. You guys say sorry to everything. But that's it yeah, sorry, no. mum, and phone somebody? <laughs> Instead of call somebody, is it phone somebody? Uh, no, I say let's call them or okay, something. Like, yeah, or I'm I'm notorious for the A. I'll say, oh, that was all right, eh? A. Like, yeah, there we go. Yeah, yeah, just bring me my maple syrup and we'll be good. And we'll be good. <laughs> um, yeah. So that farm there, um, we uh, we used to grow a number of pumpkins on that farm as well. But now uh, we we have corn, soybeans, wheat, and some canola on that farm, which was a. Um, I'm a big fan of of canola, and I worked out west actually in Saskatchewan for a year, so I learned a lot about canola farm, like how to grow canola, and um, about all the you know pros and cons of, of growing it. That and I, when I say cons, it's just uh, when you're in Ontario, you know we have a lot more humidity than they uh, do out there, yeah. out in Western Canada, so it makes it a bit more difficult with spring canola. Um, but uh, we st and I should add, I have a another farm that I also share crop with um, and it's in a place called Renfrew. So Renfrew is about an hour and a half uh, northwest of Ottawa. So um, on that farm it's also corn, soybeans, wheat and canola and, um, and then uh, my boyfriend Billy, his family, they also have a farm um, and it's uh, located closer to where we live um, and, uh, and on that farm, it's corn, soybeans. So uh, it's really interesting, definitely. Um, my friends, you know, they call me the most inconvenient farmer. Because, <laughs> yeah, you sound uh, spread out. Yeah. yeah, yeah, a little bit. But, I mean, I'm, I uh, honestly don't let me represent the other farmers in <laughs> Ontario. I just uh, spread myself too thin, probably. <laughs> but you're here representing other farmers, right? Why aren't, yeah. you, aren't you here doing something with, with uh, the young leader? Yeah, yeah so. yeah. so the American Soybean Association and Grain Farmers of Ontario um, kind of have a bit of a partnership when it comes to this program, and it's called the American Soybean Association Corteva AgriScience Young Leader Program. Um, and uh, the program itself, it uh, starts out, there's two phases of it. So the first phase is located in Des Moines, Iowa. Um, so I, yes, yes. Oh man, Woo. this That's bump us. in That's the our air, backyard. you can't even see it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I've never been to Iowa before, and of course we go, it's like the end of November, and I just remember it being so cold. Yes, you what? would have been better off coming A Canadian in telling Iowa that we're so cold? Yeah. yeah, like you guys went through, I think it was like a, like a, a, a really just cold patch. You week were probably there day. early January or mid-January. She said November. Yeah. Oh, and no. November, end of November. See? Like, I, I don't know what this is in Fahrenheit, but I remember I got off the plane and I looked at the weather network and it said minus 22. Yep. And I was like, what? Well, it was cold. It. it was cold. It was. Why do I not remember that? That's why I went back to January because that was the coldest thing I could remember. <laughs> oh, I don't know. Maybe I'm just a big baby. Yeah. <laughs> well, negative 22 yeah, in any temperature is pretty cold. Should have showed up in February because we set record highs yeah. for February. Oh, oh wow. Yeah. Well, it was it was awesome, though. We like we It was held at Corteva's. Um, headquarters there and I just learned actually just before here this time that Johnson is close to uh, Des Moines yes. yes yeah it's a it's a suburb but you can't really tell that because it's all just one town it's anymore. all one yeah. part yep. yeah, yeah yeah so it was great like we learned um, we went on tours of the facility and everything but there was also the leadership side of things with some of the activities um, one of the most memorable ones for myself was the disc test 
Oh, is that the personality test? Yeah. Yes. Oh. Yeah. I was I was trying to think of like a petri dish or disc. <laughs> like, like, uh, oh, they were and Dave went straight to the disc that goes in the field. I yes, did. I did. Yeah. Yes, I did. <laughs> but I have taken the disc test, or there's a couple other names for it. But yeah. 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 So, so what was, was your personality? Good. You were like an upper left uh, extrovert or a lower right uh, introvert. That. Uh, so I'm actually like an extroverted introvert. Okay. Um, uh, yeah. Which kind of makes sense but okay. <laughs> I have I like people and I like talking but I also like my alone time <laughs> hey you like I balance I totally get that yeah uh, yes yeah and um no it was great so basically um it's it, there's a representative or sorry I should say someone selected to go to the program and it's from they're from all over the U.S. Uh, any of the soybean growing states I should clarify mm-hmm. so that was really cool got to meet lots of different people um, and uh, they all teased me about being from Canada, so that was that was okay. Someone asked me; they didn't know that they that we grew soybeans in Canada, so that was uh, that was always kind of funny things to tap into. What maturity soybeans? Well, so fun fact actually about the difference between Canada and the U.S. So you guys talk in relative maturity, yeah. And when we speak it, when we talk about soybeans, we're talking in heat units. Hmm. So we talk in heat units for corn. Yeah. But not for soybeans. Yeah. Like, so like, you don't get a 0. 0.8 or a 1.5 or a 2.5. You just... we Well, I mean, like, we, we have it in our seed guides, but a lot of us, when you're talking to someone or you're choosing your soybeans, you're basing it on your heat unit, not your okay. relative maturity. Right. Interesting. Yeah. Hmm. So, yeah, we're in a... Um, Depends where you're talking, which farm, but uh, <laughs> the Renfrew and Orangeville ones, they're a bit lower. Um, they're about a 2650, 2700 heat unit. And then more towards Billy's farm, um, that one's about a 20, 2900 okay. heat unit zone. And yeah. Very so interesting. There's so what maturity of corn then would be there? Like how many day? Oh, gosh. Well, it was because we speak in heat units. <laughs> so you also it's for both. Yeah, okay. so, yeah. So it's um, huh. yeah. I'd have to do tri- like the <laughs> conversion. Yeah, there we, might go. Put, we might sit Corey on that a little bit. Yeah, too, I'll have so. to look into that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, and the so the trip to Des Moines went well. Went great. Yeah, I learned so much, and um, just it was really nice to go there. And um, yeah, you had asked me about what which uh, quadrant I guess that I fell into, and it was. Dominance. <laughs> Dominance. <laughs> Dominance. <laughs> she look. She's got the evil eyes. She does. Too. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. She's yeah. Like, you just wait. Well, and I'm also a redhead, so like that doesn't help my case at all. Uh, <laughs> uh, huh. So then, part two yeah. was to come down here. Yeah. So part two, um, it was. Uh, it actually started on Tuesday evening, and then. Um, yeah, and then it was tied in with Kamali Classic. So it was really great. Learned, um, you know, again, like learned a lot of different things about from the leadership side of things. But it was so great to get together with those folks again that we had met in phase one. Um, and I'd never been to Kamali Classic. So this is actually like one of my goals was to come here. So this is great that we kind of uh, get to achieve both. And yeah, so... Is there a commodity classic of Canada? Like, I've been to Western Canadian Agribition. Yeah. But that's more livestock-based. That's not row crop. Um, well, it's very, like, area-dependent, if that makes sense. Okay. So, in the summer, we have, in Eastern Canada, we have what's called Canada's Outdoor Farm Show. And then in Western Canada... Um, Oh my gosh! Uh, what's it called? Egg in motion. Egg so, in motion. I've heard that. I've heard of that. Yeah. Andy yeah. Pastor is, uh, I think, was there this last year. Yeah, yep. yeah. It's pretty. It, they're both great shows, both outdoors. So you get to see all the like, especially the equipment. You get to see it all. Did you see Quick Dick everything. McDick? I did not. Oh man. I know. Well, and he's even in. I think he's in Saskatchewan, yeah. isn't he? Yeah. Yeah. I think Dave's got a boy crush. I do. Crush. I, I I had a good time interviewing Quick yes. Dick McDick. It was. <laughs> it was good. It was too bad you got to miss him at Louisville. Yeah. Slash Farm Machiner Show. Yeah. Tanner, I got to see him in person. I know. That's you guys right. got to see him. Yeah. This yeah. is a listener that is uh, reflecting back on some of the shows we've done in the past as well. So we enjoy every one of our listeners and we love the feedback that we get, but we tell them all the time that one way we can get that feedback is by leaving us a listener review. 
whether that's on Spotify or Apple or YouTube, wherever it is, leave us a comment and make sure that you attach it to a five-star review. As long as you think we're doing a good job. So this one came from Spotify. Lamb Web Stuff. Do hmm. so you think we got a sheep herder? I Maybe, yeah. <laughs> Interesting. Five stars. They left this review on February 21st of 2024. But referring to a show from 2020. 2020. Mm. Four years ago. Three and a half years ago. I just finished listening to your Geraco podcast, and it was great. Back then, I was just a podcast. I was not a podcast listener, so recycling some old content. But I've been listening for about a year and a half. So does that mean it took them a year and a half to go through? Yeah, every one of these. There's episodes? a lot of podcasts out there, man. Ooh, wee. I'm just glad to hear someone liked it from then because it was still pretty green then. <laughs> you know, like fair. we didn't know. Wait, we still don't know what we're doing, but like <laughs> really didn't know what we were doing yeah. then. Yes, we love our listeners. We do. And uh, just so you know, it really means a lot to us when we get these reviews. It also means a lot to the future of the podcast. So keep leaving those. Let us know what you come across. And if there is something that we did good in the past, maybe we should recycle it. Yeah. We could do a derecho episode part two for no reason. (laughs) For no reason. (laughs) I think it just is a testament to we can be adaptive to situations that happen like that. You know, that was... Not part of our plan, obviously. No one was expecting to get 130 mile an hour wind in that wide of a swath. For, you know, it took out hundred millions of acres, and uh, to be able to be adaptive and, and give someone a support system like that—that's right. That's what's great. So, Kelsey, I want to get right into it. We got you. We got your story as to a little bit about your farm. We know why you're down here at Commodity Classic, but now I want to meet Bob. Okay. Who well, is Bob? So, I. Uh, well, Bob was my uh, was a brain tumor that, um, so I got diagnosed with brain cancer in January 2020. At the time, I was 26, so you know I was working in I agree retail full time, farming part time, and life was pretty good. Didn't really have much uh, tying me down, and um, you know being from a rural area, like you know you. Had, had a truck and was just driving around yep. uh, loving things and um and uh and, and uh during 20 december 2020 or sorry december 2019 um i was at my grandparents for christmas and uh just sleeping over one night and uh all of a sudden i woke up and uh, i was on um uh, i was in an, in the ambulance heading to the hospital because I had what they call a grand mal seizure, meaning it was a really intense seizure. Um, and, you know, I, I apparently I'd been having them at night before. Oh. And I didn't even know that they were happening because, well, you're asleep and yeah. everything. So um, they did some tests and, and uh, I ended up going in for my first MRI, which... You know, again, I was 26. You know, you're, you, like I didn't even think it was cancer. I didn't. Right. That thought never crossed sure. my mind. And um, and then on uh, January 23rd, 2020, I'll always remember that day. Um, I got a call uh, on the 22nd, and I was actually in a certified crop advisor meeting, and they couldn't get a hold of me because I was in. They had no service in the room, so. Uh, Basically, my dad ended up getting called saying, we need to tell Kelsey something right away, but we can't get a hold of her. So he had to call the hotel. And anyways, so I uh, talked to him and I thought, oh, no, what's going on with something with nanny and grandpa or like with my brothers or him? I don't know. And um, and it turned out that uh, my the the test results had come back and they wanted me to be because I was living in Western Ontario at the time, downtown Toronto, the next day at the hospital. Oh, wow. So they said, but you can't drive. And I was like, okay. And again, never thought anything of it. So meet up the next day on the 23rd and with the neuro-oncologist, and he sat me down, and he held my hands, and I thought, what the heck? Why is he? Hold, why is this doctor holding this my hands? Because you feel fine, right? Hold my hand. Yeah, down. like I felt fine. <laughs> Bedside and, manner. Yeah, yeah. just good. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And he said, "Kelsey, I have some really bad, like, tough news for you." And he said, um, "I, you know, after looking at the tests, uh, you have a cancerous brain tumor." And honestly, I was shocked. Like, you know, you just like. 
like you're 26. You, yeah. you don't think like you, you think you're invincible at that age, right? right? So I um, uh, so you know I was shocked, and as he was explaining things, like honestly, I don't really even remember what he was explaining because I was so shocked. And then I said, but can I still drive? Because I'm an independent woman, and you know, like, and living in a rural area, yes. like, how are, how am I going to get around, right? That was, and I thought about work and all this, and he says, "Oh no, 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 no! You you won't be able to drive. Actually, your um, uh, your license will be suspended. But I'm sure that there's public transportation where you live." Right. And I started sobbing, sobbing. Um, so uh, I ended up, um, he said, well, the first stage of what we need to do to get this dealt with is to put, like, do, a, um, do surgery and try to remove the tumor. So I had to do, my life literally did like a 180. I went from being extremely driven, super independent, um, and I had to then rely on my dad to drive me around. Um, and on top of that, I wasn't able to work, and that was really tough. You go from being that farm kid that grew up and work is, you know, work is just a part of your life. Yeah, like. yeah. So I ended up um, having to uh, to take some time um, to go for the surgery, and the surgery was actually um, uh, what they call I can't remember the exact name, but it's basically an awake surgery. So they put you to sleep. Oh. Yeah, <laughs> it was very weird. Um, they put you to sleep, and then they wake you up part way through just to check to make sure that you're still able to speak or and and um, your memory is okay. And I don't, I vaguely remember waking up, but then um, so after that was done, the hope was that they'd be able to get all of it out. But unfortunately, they could only get half of it out. Oh wow! Yeah, so it was sitting basically like on the left upper side of my brain and it was in between speech and memory and he didn't want to touch the speech and memory too much because then it could he would be at risk of me losing those capabilities um, so I ended up um, getting di or sorry not just diagnosed but and my treatment plan ended up having to add on radiation and chemo so the way it works with brain cancer when it comes to chemo is it's a little different than other types of cancer treatments with chemo because we have a sac around our brain yep. and so I wouldn't be able to just get like the pick line where it it you know it's, it goes through your body it had to be with um, pills so and because of that it would be three weeks of uh, it was three weeks of actual chemo so on the pills taking them every day and then it would be five weeks off so that was one round so you know, it was. I ended up having to do um, 30, 30 rounds, so thirty days Whoa. worth of radiation, <laughs> and then six rounds of chemo. So, and of course, the beauty of it, it was during COVID. Yes. So um, it was really tough to get through all of that, and you know, to be honest, like I, my dad and I, we were super close before, and then he learned an awful lot about me uh, during that time, and. Um, I, uh, I had eggs retrieved actually um, just before I started radiation and chemo because uh, they told me, well, your, your, your fertility might not be as strong as it, what it could be before. Oh, I gotcha. So um, when I got that done, um, it, was, uh, it was definitely, it was definitely a, a hard lesson to accept um, that, you know, as a woman, I want to be able to have kids. That was sure. my goal and I wouldn't, might not be able to. But the good thing is, is that um, March twenty, March twenty first, or sorry, March fourteenth, twenty twenty one, remission. Oh, oh great, that's good. Yeah. I was really hoping there was a positive end to the story. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. No, no. I'm all. I I'm feeling a lot better. Um, I think you know, for me, one of the uh, when I tell my story, I like to make sure that people know that when you're going through that treatment, it's a lot. It's really hard on you. What I found, everyone's journey is different, but for me, the hardest part is recovery. Because you, you think in your head, I've gone through all of this, I can get back to my life of what I was doing before. Mm -hmm. But you have a lot of hard things to accept because your body is still healing, mm -hmm. or now has to heal. And on top of that, 
that might mean that you're not going to be able to do everything that you could before. So I had a, a lot of things to accept of things that I could and couldn't do. But in saying that, I think that now, because of those things that I've come to accept, um, in a weird way of the path of life, it's uh, definitely made me a bit more focused on things that I want and doing things that I want. So as you said, I'm pregnant now and that's a goal in life. So that's great. <laughs> what well, is there anything different from before to now that, or are you still still healing or feel like that? Um, so I've definitely healed a lot since 2021. Mm -hmm. um, like I have way more energy now than I did back then. Um, but before I got, um, so before I got treated, I had a lot of energy during treatment. Um, I, whether it was surgery or radiation or chemo, um, I was really tired. I was really getting, I was just, to be honest, I was just exhausted all the time. Um, you know, I never under like I was just pushing on through, pushing on through and it was it wasn't until um, I was actually uh, well it's kind of a funny story in a way and I, I you know I this is the cancer humor coming yeah, out of okay. me so I apologize yeah. <laughs> but, um, I uh, so there was um, someone I was talking to and uh, and I'm really involved with the junior at the time I was really involved with the Junior Farmers Association of Ontario and they were all having a big meeting. So when I got diagnosed, I texted my friend and said, you know, this is what's going on. And they stood up and told everybody oh, in the yeah. room. <laughs> so then everyone knew about it. So I thought, well, I don't want, you know, people to find out and, and think it's, you know, absolute like the, the end of the world. Because, right. again, I was 26 and thought I was invincible at the sure. time. So I put it on social media. And that was when the name Bob came to fruition because it became kick Bob to the curb there you go yeah so um, it was definitely a, like I, I honestly can't uh, can't thank the people on social media enough because during COVID I think everyone was going through a bit of loneliness mm -hmm. and to be going through the cancer at the same time uh, you know I needed that support yeah. so if I needed something some support uh, that's where I turned to and originally I thought, well, no one really wants to hear about what I'm going through. But then I had some of my farmer friends calling me and saying, you know, from all over, like some from the U.S. I even have a friend in Australia who farms and she called and she said, you should be posting about what's going on because people want to know. And as from a cancer a patient side, I want people to know that about what it's like going through that, especially as a young adult. So for me, that was why I started posting it. And um, I, yeah, I just had amazing support that I can never, ever thank these people enough for. So I, I caught wind of your story after I think it was a tweet or, or exit, what do you call it on X now? An X. An X. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Whichever I you want to call it. <laughs> <laughs> About you being able to make the drive to the farm for the first time since your operation. Yeah. Now explain that because driving doesn't seem that difficult. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but uh, I think it's interesting that she, if I got told I had brain cancer, I'd probably be like, how long do I got or what do we got to do? Am I going to die? And you're like, I can't drive. No, <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah, like that was the thing that got you. <laughs> yeah. So that's a big deal. Right? It is. And so the first yeah. drive back to the farm has got to be. A big oh, deal. Uh, like, so basically one of the biggest, um, I guess you could say challenges that I had with recovery was trying to figure out how to conserve energy and enough energy to be able to drive very far. I am. I got my light when I got my license back. Um, I thought I was so excited. I was like, "Yes, I can drive again. This is awesome." I drove for, I think it was 15 minutes, and I had to turn around and go home because I was exhausted. Really? Well, you think about when you're driving. It's you're, you're using your brain exactly. And you're having to focus, right? And so it was very tough for my brain. And I would just, my body in turn would just shut down. So I had to build up to being able to drive very far. So um, it, it honestly, like, I, I remember I was able to drive, I think it was like three hours at one point. And I thought, wow, like, if I can drive three hours, that's amazing. 
So I was a little nervous because I hadn't driven very far, really, and it was five hours away. And um, I ended up, uh, and my dad couldn't come with me, Billy couldn't come with me, so it was like, <laughs> I had to go up that way, so it was like, had to do it. So I went, and um, I stopped twice just to like sure. kind of recoup a little bit, and all right, I'm doing this. But I was so proud of myself. I, Absolutely. I, I, that was, well, since 20, that would have been the last time I had driven back to the farm by myself or driven from farm to east, whichever, that was before that was before I got diagnosed. So that's almost been, that was like three and a half years. Wow. It's hard to think of. It really puts it in perspective. Your brain really is truly, you know, a muscle in your body of, that needs to be mm-hmm. taken care of. And you're proven you can actually make it better in yeah. your recovery process. That, it's interesting. Well, thank you. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's a it's a terrible disease, um, and I they, I sincerely think that there that more research needs to be um, done for not just cures but also recovery support. I think that that's a, a really big thing that's missing um, for all cancers. Right. So did they ever figure out was it just random that you had brain cancer? It's not generational by any means or anything that's going to pass on. Completely random. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So it's definitely something, though, that I I do want people to, to know is that it was random. And then you said memory is front left. So if I don't want him to remember this evening, I can just smack him <laughs> right up here. Is that, is that how that works? I mean, you could give it a try. All right, just, just double check and make sure I hit the right spot. I have troubles remembering sometimes. So maybe I have hit that side quite a bit. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. It's not from all the times that we've hit you in the back of the head. Yeah, it's no. not back it's, of the head. We need it's to, like, when I'm underneath the sprayer, the you know, hitting my head on the <laughs> on the yeah. yeah. What was I doing? On the planner. On That's right. Going under, working on uh, row cleaners like before season, uh, smacking my head on the planner. Mm-hmm. Oh man, yeah, it that hurts. hurts. <laughs> it, it does. Or if it gets like right on the button of your cap. That's so you get to, you get to go back to work. Yes. Yeah. 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 So um, yeah, so I ended up making a very very silly decision. And after all of that treatment, I was like, yeah, I'm ready to go back to work. So six weeks after I went through, I ended up getting a job in eastern Ontario. Because, you know, with cancer, you really do come to realize, like, what you truly want and what you're comfortable with. And honestly, life's too short. Like, I was, yes, I was living in western Ontario, and I did really like it. But it wasn't home. It's not where I grew up, but the people I grew up in, the area I grew up with. And so... For me, this was a big thing to to be in the East. And, um, oh, and here you go. Here's like the memory lapse right now. So what did you ask me? <laughs> he doesn't remember either. <laughs> I was asking, you did you go back to work? Oh, and yes. Then from there, you said you had a crazy story that you... Uh, well, yeah. it, it ties in. It does. It ties in. But, yeah, so I started working for a company. Um, in egg retail and I loved working in egg retail the way I see it is it was helping the farmer do gotcha. do most and the best so I ended up going starting to work for an egg retail and I was supposed to start part-time yeah that that part-time you know yeah, turned the farm kid to, you, yeah. yeah it was like oh you know I went to full-time way too fast and um, I ended up burning out so was the silly decision to go back to work or to work for egg retail uh, to go back to work. <laughs> okay, okay, all right. I was just making clarification. Yeah, yeah. No, I needed to uh, needed to go. B- well, I felt like I needed to go back to work, but my uh, my body shut me down pretty quick on that one. So. Yeah. No, that makes a lot of sense. I'm glad that uh, you've been able to progress through the recovery, and it sounds like there's still even some recovery still yet ahead of you. But what an awesome story of determination that we can share with our listeners. But we also enjoy playing games with oh. our guests. Oh, boy. And we're going to play one that we haven't played in a while. It's called Hot Takes. So I'm okay. going to read a phrase, and I want to know if you agree with the phrase or not. Oh, boy. Okay. We'll start with an easy one, because I know there's only one right answer to the first one. <laughs> That's true. Pineapple belongs on pizza. Of course it does. Yes. No, it does yes, not. Yes, it does. <laughs> it does. It does not. On certain pizzas. Don't, it doesn't yeah. need, doesn't well, need yeah, to be on every pizza. Right. I don't just need to open a can of pineapple and put it on everything. <laughs> no, but on a pizza, it does like it needs to be on there. Oh. Any and bacon or bacon in general, put your pineapple on there. I still love adding some sauerkraut, a little extra peppers and onions. 
What a beautiful pizza. <laughs> what a payoff question here. <laughs> yeah. This you is like one that? for Tanner. Making itiner- an itinerary ruins a trip. Ooh. Am I allowed to be like 50-50 on that? Nope. Sure. No. No, no I need a hot not. take. Hot take. <laughs> okay. Say so, okay. Let's say uh, a vacation, not like coming to commodity. Okay. Classic. Okay. Yeah. Then, um, yeah, I don't need a itinerary. <sighs> Just go with the flow. No, I want to know where I'm going to be. It's got to so be then terrible I can relax. to be one of your kids or your well, wife. Well, but if you're no, like, if you're all the great things, it's not like it's not. We are going to have fun. It says fun on the itinerary. <laughs> it says fun on the itinerary. <laughs> <laughs> it's it time to smile eat. more. Not, the itinerary doesn't look like the itinerary that you guys have had to follow. And then these you're last mad when days. you didn't eat at five o'clock because it's six o'clock because you guys are having too much fun. And it, yeah, so that's you, not it at all. I just want to make sure that we maximize the opportunity. <laughs> How about here's here's a tough one. Apple Music. Is better than Spotify. Ooh. I would say that Apple Music is not better. I than agree. Than Spotify. I agree. Yeah, you can. I mean, Spotify. You have access to like podcasts and everything too, mm-hmm. right? So. But you got you have access to that on Apple Music, but Spotify's got the video. It does. You can watch too. It does. Yeah, but Apple Music. Well, are we talking about Apple Music and podcasts? On it's the kind of the same Ooh, thing, isn't it? Is it? Because it is. Oh, like see, then it is worse because it's not today together. So no. that, yep. <laughs> yeah. right. it is worse. <laughs> what about uh, peanut butter with eggs? Oh Ew. no! What? Is that like an, is that like a what? Well, one of my uh, favorite American thing? No, it's not an American <laughs> thing. One of my favorite breakfast sandwiches is a peanut butter toast with an egg and cheese sandwich. What? Yes. That's that's why. It is. Deli- what do you put on your eggs? You put ketchup on your eggs. Might as well of throw some bananas on there, like Elvis. No, Ooh. no. <laughs> that's not a bad idea. <laughs> you guys put. Is ketchup? the eggs uh, runny? I could do it either way. I could just oh. scramble, or I could have. You want to know what goes with the peanut butter? Jelly. Yes. <laughs> peanut butter and peanut jelly. butter jelly time. Yes. That's what goes <laughs> with peanut butter. <laughs> not you eggs. Put, uh, you put ketchup on your eggs. She puts ketchup on her eggs. I do not. Well, I don't mind if I have a little ketchup for like some potatoes or something. And it touches my eggs, but I don't okay. like that. I don't smell it. Because you're a hot like sauce. Not you can't, on your you eggs at stuff. all? No, I'd rather have like hot sauce on my oh, eggs. Oh, yeah. I don't know. Like, I mean, I don't know if it's a gingy thing or not. But He's like got a beer. <laughs> See? See how this works? See, he <laughs> knows. <laughs> yeah. Why didn't you bring about, me one? He's all about the hot sauce. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, that's man. right. <laughs> He's got that. Well, there you go. That's a little game to kind of yeah. segue into the last part of our podcast. So it, how have you enjoyed your time down here at Commodity? I have really enjoyed it. I honestly like so in the leadership program yesterday, they were talking a bit about more about the politics side of things in the U.S. And I will com- be completely honest that we understand Canadian politics and we somewhat understand American, but it was really valuable to us to be able to learn more about the American politics, how things work, you know, where are the holdups. For example, we hear about the farm bill. Mm-hmm. Well, we didn't know anything else about it. We just heard farm bill. Yeah. <laughs> what does that mean? What does it's it do? It's not actually about farm, mostly. Yeah, well, yeah. There's I mean, a little chunk of it. Yeah, and then, it, but like overall the show too, like just being able to walk through and seeing new technologies coming through. Um, sometimes technologies they co- and innovations in ag, they actually start in the U.S. or they start somewhere else, and then they're brought to Canada. Right. So it's really neat to see some of the things that are going on and um, here, and what's kind of going to be making it up to Canada. I met a few different um, different booths uh, businesses today, for example, that they are starting to come into Canada. So it's kind of cool to see that and get a bit of a head uh, head of the knowledge with that. So yeah. Well, I also want to circle back to the introduction Corey said and how you talked about how you used to grow pumpkins. Are you still growing pumpkins? Well, the uh, kind of one of the tough things with recovery is I need to be able to harvest them. <laughs> so um, I, right now we're not growing pumpkins, but we will hopefully be getting back into them soon. Because you almost have a love of pumpkins. Oh, yeah, 100%. Why, you can do so much with pumpkins. So yeah, what do you love about a pumpkin? Because they're just, they're pretty, and you can do, like, so many different things well, with them. Name them up. Pumpkin pie. Pumpkin pie. <laughs> so the pumpkin, the what pumpkin else can you do puree. with a pumpkin? Pumpkin carving. The pumpkin puree. Exactly. Pure, what, what do you do? What's a puree? 
Or well, it's, it's like you really take all the insides lake, yeah. out and then you blend it all up together and okay. you can make it so, yes, you could do pumpkin pie with it, but it's also really good in like some smoothies. It's really good for you to eat. Um, and just like in general, the different varieties, like it's it's not just like, oh, the that crop, like it ends up turning beige. It's like, ah, or yellow. It stays colorful. It, yeah, yeah. And you so can you see like the, some of them are like white and you can have black you can have blue like sure do you have cool. a shirt that says i shouldn't have eaten the pumpkin seeds now that you're <laughs> pregnant <laughs> oh man hey, i, I like should. pumpkin seeds that's a great idea <laughs> I think you need that shirt. <laughs> if someone wants funny. to make that and send it to me that the, would be if you awesome. like pumpkin how long like how long do we have until you june 23rd is june the due date all right we got we got a little time yeah get that shirt we'll to make that shirt yeah yeah if tanner yeah. can get the show out in time <laughs> we could still make the shirt we could yeah <laughs> there we go. Yeah. Is, that, is that a stereotypical redhead thing to like pumpkins? Uh, <laughs> no, I don't think so. I think <laughs> I think it's just. Is there a ginger know, pumpkin? A, a, I mean, you could probably like put this ginger spice <laughs> oh, in the pumpkin. Go. There you go. Make yourself spice. like a little spice latte. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So pumpkins yeah. a squash, right? Yes. Yeah. Do you like other squashes or just pumpkins? Uh, yeah, I love squash. Yeah. Like eating it. Oh yeah, yeah. Maybe do you guys like squash? Yeah. Uh, I, I grew up like eating squash, butternut. Butter, 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 yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. man, my wife's been making that. Squash. Really? No, it's no? good. It's, it's way better than like potatoes and all that. You stick spices on it, right? Yeah, it's good. Yeah. yeah. Or like um, spaghetti squash. Some yes. people they like that if they're, you know, cautious of like gl- right. gluten and everything. You, never, you never had spaghetti squash? I don't know that I have. You literally cook this thing, you cut it in half, and you take a fork and you grind it down, and it looks like spaghetti. I've seen my wife do that. I think but maybe you I don't have eat it. I maybe have eaten it. You just, I just go didn't have know it was chicken strips <laughs> with your bland diet. Yeah. yeah, sorry. It's like I mean, we it, pumpkin is just so delicious. Sometimes you just forget about when you had it because it just like <laughs> fades through your memory. When you did grow them, <laughs> did you sell them like to like I don't know, like a Walmart or to a market or so direct? Actually, I was um, I was selling them uh, at the at the end. I was actually doing like. Um, uh, pick your own. So people are coming ah, to the farm, yeah. and um, but it, I actually have a funny story about pumpkins. So uh, I was really determined. I was like, okay, what what market can I get into with the pumpkins here? Right. So I thought it was a great idea to get into the wedding business. Ah, that was a terrible idea. Weddings, <laughs> pumpkins. Yeah. Yeah. There are a lot of fall weddings. Yeah, yeah. So, um, but being close to Toronto, right? Like you're close to the city. Expectations are a little different. Yep. So I, I had met this, uh, you know, soon-to-be bride, and she was, um, and she loved pumpkins. She wanted these teacup pumpkins, right? So they're the little tiny ones, fit in the palm of your hand. And so I had shown her pictures and everything. She knew exactly what she was doing. And someone told me they said, make sure that you do like a 50% deposit from her. So then that way, if you know, if something happens, sure. at least I'm getting paid something. So two days before her wedding, I still hadn't heard from her. And she was, and the deal was she was supposed to come to the farm to pick them up. And I still hadn't heard from her. So I called her and I was like, hey, you know, you still the pumpkins. And she said, well, oh my gosh, I'm so stressed about the wedding. Like, can you bring them to me? So I said, well, where's the wedding? Well, it was only 20 minutes away. So I thought, you know what, I'm going right. to do this. And so I bring them to her and she comes up to me. And she uh, and she looks in the box and she starts sobbing. She's like, "You ruined my wedding!" Oh no! And I said, "Well, what's wrong with them?" Well, I thought they were in the shape of teacups. Oh my god! <laughs> you, <laughs> you monster! Yeah. <laughs> they didn't get a divorce or anything. Uh, <laughs> not that I know uh, of. But well, he's probably scared to do it. Yeah, yeah. We've got a, a local person that grows pumpkins, and I don't know if this is like a world known thing but she like scarifies them like well when they're green still oh yeah and we'll go i don't know if she's a knife or a needle or what and like you can go on her website and request like happy birthday or like yeah. you know f you like if you wanted to send it to like a coworker <laughs> or something and when it matures it's scarred on there and she sends yeah. it to you and it's yeah and i've heard of doing that before yeah. and i was like wow that is so cool actually a friend of mine um who is also a pumpkin grower she started doing that a little bit too, and she was doing it for um, uh, like a kit, like in a classroom. Yep. Right? And so it was, you know, Nate with her names. Yep. I thought, oh, that's wow. cute. Value you add, guys, Dave. Value you guys add. Hear this? Value. It sounds like we're sitting in a lunch cafeteria right now. What is that? Everybody's tearing their booths down. This is literally the we're last shutting her down. aspect. 
that. Of yeah. Commodity Classic. I don't know where it's coming from. It's like it's coming through the system. Sounds like an angle grinder to it me. It does. <laughs> so we better get this wrapped up. I hate to cut it short, but uh, soon they're going to haul us out of here yeah. on Forklift. <laughs> so as you look towards the future for you, what are you most excited to do in 2024? I think the thing I am the most excited for is baby. Yes. <laughs> baby will be coming in June. So I think for me that is very exciting. Just it's something that I never thought I'd be able to do. Um, so this is this yeah. is amazing. Do you know cool. boy, girl? We're keeping it a surprise. To you right. or to everyone else? Uh, to us as well, okay. everyone. Great. Wow. Yeah. That's awesome. Well, gonna have, like, Tanner, a, Tanner is a great name <laughs> if it comes out as a boy. Well, what are we're you looking, laughing about? We're looking at Dutch names. Oh. oh, that's not Tanner. No. <laughs> what makes it a Dutch name? Yeah. Uh, well, it's a. Uh, well, gonna have like multiple. Like, give us Vander, a few that you're not going to. Vanderplog so, or okay. something like that, right? Uh, sorry. Yeah. Don't you have to have like multiples like Vanderplog or? <laughs> <laughs> that's like a last Dutch name. <laughs> well, we, like one of them that it could be. Um, uh, what was what I saw like it, like a, a like Oliver I think that was one of that's the not, options yeah. but not for like that's that's not sure. one on our list but yeah. uh, um, oh um, uh, like uh, for a woman it could be something like uh, Yeti oh Yeti would be unique yeah but absolutely yeah so things like that or well you like and Dave that. came up with a new question that we're going to start oh. asking so oh, why yeah. don't you ask her the last question Dave asked it good. So uh, we talk about agriculture, talk about food. What is the coolest food or the best food that you've ever had, and where did you have it? Honestly, and I don't know if it's a pregnancy thing or not, but I had, like, the best pasta I've ever had in my life here. A pasta? It's a pasta. <laughs> yeah. It's pasta. Pasta. <laughs> <laughs> it's a pasta. Here in Houston? Yeah, it was like it was actually by the um, like catered in, I guess, for yeah. the young leader program, and it just had like it was penne pasta, and it had like this beautiful Alfredo sauce, oh, and man. it had like some crumbles on top. It was so. Now I'm good. getting hungry. Now I'm dr <laughs> like now <Yeah>. I'm <laughs> stopping. <laughs> Oh, that's great. Well, this was a pleasure. I'm glad that you stuck around to do this interview with us. I'm glad we got to do it in person. I'm glad you said yes. Well, thank you for asking. I'm yeah. uh, pretty honored to be the Canadian yeah. Canadian agronomist. The Canadian, <laughs> the Canadian agronomist. agronomist. <laughs> that's what the title's going to be. It's going to be Farm for Fun with Kelsey Banks, Canadian agronomist. Opposed to another agronomist. I <laughs> <laughs> the. Oh, I have to put the. The Canadian. Yeah, economist. there you go. Yeah. There you now go. there's only one. Oh, now they're shutting the lights <laughs> off. <laughs> we are literally shutting this place down. Yeah. All right. All right. Well, I guess that's the way we wrap this well, up. Well, it's, it's been a lot of fun, eh? Hey. hey. <laughs> what do you say, Corey? It's a crack, a cold one. You deserve it. <laughs>